Okay, Dr. Mindy here with probably the best news of all the autophagy fasting videos I've done all week uh, for you today. And that is how the heck are you gonna break this autophagy fast that you all have been through? So, if you've been doing this with me for the last week, you know that there are four principles to autophagy fasting. Uh, the first one is you wanna minimize your, or, or completely go without food for 16 hours. The second is that you want to eat fast first, fat first to break your fast. Um, the third is that you are going to keep your proteins under 20 grams. And the fourth is that you use carbs last. So um, it was really a fun exercise for all of us in our resetter group to try this fast because there's some really cool principles in here. Um, and what I, the feedback that I got from my resetters is a couple of things. One is most of you were totally shocked at how protein is in everything. If that was you, put it in the comment section, just protein and everything, because that was the biggest aha that I saw from the resetters was, wow, am I eating a lot of protein? And I think it's important that you all did that exercise because what I see a lot with patients is people get frustrated that they're not losing weight and they're keeping their carbs down and they're eating more good fat. I actually hear that, the good fat a lot, where they're eating all this good fat, they're keeping their carbs down and they're gaining weight or they're not losing weight. A lot of times what they don't know is that the variable is protein. So if you were in my resetter group, you saw that protein's in everything. It's in vegetables, it's everywhere. And to stimulate autophagy, you need to keep that protein down under 20 grams. So that was a real big takeaway a lot of you had. Um, others of you talked about how you absolutely loved breaking your fast with fat. I think it's an incredible idea. The reason for it is it elongates ketosis and it minimizes hunger. So a lot of you told me that was a great exercise. Many of you liked breaking your fast with coffee or tea, uh, especially if you put oil in it. Uh, Earl Grey tea specifically has bergamot citrus in it that will uh, enhance autophagy. So if you're already in autophagy, it sure makes sense to have a cup of tea with some bergamot citrus in it. Um, you can find it in Earl Grey tea. So that a lot of you had that feedback for me. Uh, the carb manager, oh my gosh, you cannot do this fast without the carb manager. You have to have some way to be able to measure your macros. So a lot of you found the carb manager to be just an incredible tool. Um, the other fun one that I heard a lot of you resetters talk about was pickles and olives were your best friend because they were high in fat, low in carbs, and had no protein. So a lot of you learned in the middle of the week, hey, I can kind of lean on some olives, I could eat some pickles, and I could still stay within these macros. Now, I had a lot of experienced fasters uh, that are in my reset group that went through this fast and got really deep into ketosis. Um, some of you didn't notice it as much, um, but nevertheless, super cool fast. I think the big takeaways as far as results were uh, was m many of you lost weight. A lot, I saw a lot of resetters comment about how your clothes changed uh, five to seven pound uh, weight loss. I heard a lot of you lose seven pounds in one week from this fast. Uh, better moods and sleeping better. That's fasting. That's what happens when you stimulate autophagy. Your body heals much better. So um, super awesome fast. Now what are you going to do? So a couple thoughts I have for you. Remember that you have not been eating protein for a very much for a very long time. And many of you just totally skipped animal protein because you, you could just see how quickly it would add up. So starting tomorrow, add protein back in, but lightly. Don't just go for a steak. Uh, you're probably gonna find that if you go for a steak, you're gonna end up with a real tummy ache. Um, if you've been off grains, uh, please don't go jump into a bagel. That might also cause you some problems. So I always say steamed vegetables, which I know is not really exciting to hear because you've been doing veggies all week, but steamed vegetables, um, some broths tomorrow morning to slowly bring you back into it. Um, if you do animal protein, I would actually probably start with eggs. Some of you were already having eggs this week. Um, and then you could do like, some, some soups, like vegetable soups, maybe even a little minestrone soup, 
Um, that would probably get, be good. And then by the end of the day tomorrow, you can start to add in more heavier proteins, uh, steak and chicken. But watch yourself. You have a really cool opportunity now is if you eat something and you fall asleep, probably too much sugar in that thing that you ate. Um, if you get a stomach ache from anything you eat over the next couple of days, you're probably, your body's having a little bit of a problem digesting that. So there's a really cool opportunity for you here. But tread lightly. Um, I've seen this with enough fasting challenges is that, that it's very common to just go all the way to boomerang and to go all the way into the junk food you had last the week before. Um, and you could try that, but you might find that you feel really sick. So, and if you do do that, what I encourage you to do is check your blood sugar the next morning or soon afterwards and see what it does to you because that reader really gives a whole new relationship for you with your food. Okay, other thing that I wanna talk about is diet variation. So, um, a lot of my resetters, you guys have been doing these fasts with me for a while. A lot of my patients know that I've customized diet variation for you so that you know how to do high protein days and low protein days and low carb days. So look at this autophagy fast as a tool. You don't always have to do it five days. Sometimes you could actually just do it one or two days. Maybe you go on vacation and you come back and you're like, oh, I way overdid it. Just click in and do some autophagy fasting for a couple of days. Uh, I, I think Norma, you put this on there that you lost all of your holiday Thanksgiving weight. How awesome is that? This is called being metabolically flexible. The more you fast, the more you do keto, you can click out and do a high carb day or you could even you know, completely throw all your senses out the window and eat a bunch of junk food. Um, but the minute you come back to these types of principles, you should be able to drop weight quickly and get your body and, and brain back where you want it. So rely on this. You don't always have to do five days. You can do a day or two to click yourself back in. Um, I also like, I might even on an ongoing basis, I think I'm going to do an autophagy fasting once a week because it just was easy and fun and I realized that I do better with a little less uh, meat protein. So that's also an option there for you. Um, and a couple other questions I had was uh, what happens I was waking up at 3 a.m.? The other part of that question is a lot of people talked about heart palpitations where your heart beats really strong, pretty common in a fast. Uh, that's really sh ind indicative of uh, some adrenal fatigue. So very first water fast I ever did, I, my heart was like boom, boom, just pounding really strong. And I was pretty adrenal fatigued at the time. And I've been really working on my adrenals and I'll tell you now when I fast, I don't get that palpitation at all. Adding sea salt water in is really great. Uh, it's a way of, of balancing and helping yourself. So. But all in all, it was a really cool experience. Uh, if you partic participated in the fast and you lost some weight or you had a really good change, just put it in the comment section so people who are, are looking at this can see what a neat fast this is and, and the benefit of it. Um, now, let me tell you something really cool. Uh, you guys all know I love fasting. You know I love keto. I love feasting. I love high protein. I love this variation. I love this whole idea of being metabolically flexible and that we're not tied to one diet. So I have created something called the Metabolic Reset. And it's a 15 day program and I'm going to uh, launch it at my January 5th event this year. It's a live event here. I'm in, in the San Jose, California area. If you're local, come to it. It's awesome. My, my events are hundreds of people all in community together, all learning these principles. I do a ton of demos to help you get it into your brain. So if you're local, come, we will be live streaming it. So if you're not local, you can watch it live stream. Uh, so if you want to know more information about the Metabolic Reset, just put it in the, in, the, um, in the comment section, Metabolic Reset, and I'll send you some information. Uh, I'm pretty darn excited about this reset. This will be my fourth reset that I've created. And what I want for this one is it to be a 15 day experience for those of you that are really stuck with your weight loss that you can just anytime you can hop into this 15 day metabolic reset and it unsticks you. I'm taking in this reset the principles of Jason Fung, the principles of Walter Longo, Naomi Whittle, uh, 
Dan Papa. I'm too, like all these people that have so much knowledge right now on fasting and stem cells and autophagy and insulin resistance. And I'm taking all of their wonderful brains and I'm putting it together in a 15 day program that will be easy to follow. So I'm really excited that with that. I would love to see you at the event if, uh, if you're local. So, but with that, it was a blast. I really enjoyed it. I had personally a great experience. Uh, next week, stay tuned to these Facebook Lives because next week I wanna talk about fasting and hormones. So I had a personal experience this week, uh, and if you go back and watch some of my videos, you know that I've been going through perimenopause and menopause, so my blood sugar and ketones did something really funny this week um, because of my hormonal swings. So I'll talk to you about it. Next week I'm gonna go through, how do you know when to fast? Well, when, if, if you're a woman, like, when should you fast in your cycle? If you're perimenopause or menopause or postmenopause, you know, should you fast? Should you not fast? These are questions that I get a lot and I have some really solid answers for you. So, as always, from the bottom of my heart, you guys are great. If you want in my Resetter group, just put Resetters, we'll invite you in. We got an amazing tribe of people in there. It's, it's off the hook with support and knowledge. So, as always, I hope that helps.